Welcome to Business Mentorship, Keeping It Real, where we feature entrepreneurs who are passionate about their business and have participated in our guest blog, Share Your Stories Dot Online. Today, we'd like to introduce you to Francis Michelson, who is an author, a nutritionist, a personal trainer, and a speaker. And she joins us today from Montreal. Welcome. Hi, Trish. Thank you. You know, Francis, I, one of the really wonderful things that I admire about your story is that you've had a really stellar career in the fitness industry. And you've been an inspiration to a lot of folks who have sort of been following in your footsteps. So I want to give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about how your career started and how you sort of had made some left and right turns along the way. Okay, well, it's a kind of journey. <laughs> I'll try to make the big journey, uh, the big steps, little steps. But just one tiny correction: I'm not a nutritionist; I'm a naturopath. There you go. All right. My apologies. No, it's okay. It's just interestingly enough, a, a lot of people ask, "What is the difference?" And naturopathy, we dig deeper into. Ah. You know, it's a, it's not just about nutrition; it's about what the body's expressing. So, we work closely with. Um, all kinds of anything from simply, you know, gut health, which is my specialty actually, to cancer, to chronic disease, whereas nutrition is strictly food based, you know? Okay. So that's a little aside. Anyways, yes. So my career began way back, and I always fear aging myself, but when Ken Cooper said, you gotta move, I started moving. <laughs> and I really uh, was went crazy with the whole aerobic thing. And I just started off teaching classes for anybody that I could. And that quickly grew to opening up a fitness center. Um, I had a partner. So we co-owned a fitness center and that was in um, the 80s. And lasted about 12 years. And really this was, you know, it sounds kind of normal, but there weren't many just regular fitness centers. There was just the why, you know? Right. Anyways, um, in the late 90s, I recognized that moving was great, but there was something missing from just doing cardiovascular um, stuff, whether it was running, walking, jumping, whatever. So I started to train. And being the person that I am, I got into training seriously and got into bodybuilding. And that led to personal training again when personal training was just kind of starting, you know, nobody really knew about personal training. But when women saw my body change from being kind of like a larger, well, maybe not larger, but just a different shape to, to, to leaner and smaller, they recognized the fact that maybe they should be doing weights too. So everyone wanted me to personally train them. And yet I didn't have a lot of education because there wasn't a lot of education. So right. I started to travel and there was an organization at the time that had just started in the States called IDEA. I don't know if that means anything to you. No. Oh my God. Um, anyway, so I went and I got certified and, um, and then the rest is history. I ended up opening uh, one of, um, well, definitely in the West part of Montreal, the first personal training center. And that was in 2001. And at the same time, I, having traveled to the States to learn more about training, I took a, a class at a conference with a woman named Tammy Lee Webb. I don't know if that means anything to you, but Buns of Steel. Did you ever remember yeah. hearing about Buns of Steel? Sure. Yeah. She was using a tiny little band for her legs. And I thought, man, this is genius. This little band can do so much. So I ended up opening, um, starting an exercise product distribution company with one small band with my partner at the time. And that small band grew into over 600 products. And so it was crazy. So I was operating a personal training studio, running this product company. And I started to feel, well, I already started feeling not that great when I was bodybuilding, even though I looked terrific, I didn't feel that terrific. And I knew that something was off. I was taking a lot of supplements, my eating. I was just listening to others about what to eat. And I didn't know enough about how food, the, the relationship between food and our body and so on and so on. So I um, also, I must say, when you personally train people, you really are it's serious. You know, you're taking care of their bodies. You're taking care of their health. 
And, you know, especially women would say, well, you know, why did my doctor say I'm low in iron? And why is my thyroid not pro operating properly? And how come I'm losing weight? I'm not losing weight and she is. Anyway, there were way too many questions. So I had heard about a naturopath and naturopathy was kind of just, there wasn't too much back then. And again, I'm going back to the early 2000s, you know? So now we're, we're, we're quite flooded with health practitioners. Yeah. We're lucky, right? We have yeah. the osteopaths and all the massage therapists and all the spiritual healers. I mean, there's so much, but even in the early 2000s, there wasn't. Anyways, I had heard about a naturopath. So I went to see him for myself and I was blown away about how little we really learned and knew about our own bodies. Right. So I, with what I learned, I decided that I would go back to school, school, and um, and study naturopathy. So I did, and that was in two thousand and eight, and I graduated in two thousand eleven, and I since have sold my product, uh, exercise product distribution company, and sold the studio about seven years ago because from having just one personal training studio, everybody quickly became a personal trainer. You know, there's sure. personal trainers everywhere in yeah. the park and there, well, now of course everybody's in their home, but I mean, there many studios started to open. So yeah. business wasn't as wonderful as it was when I was alone. So I sold it. And now, um, ironically, I still personal train people. I have a studio beside my home, um, but I spend most of my time taking care of, you know, counseling people through naturopathy. And then I was so excited with what I learned um, in school that I wanted to tell everybody, hey, listen, you know, you don't need to go to the doctor every time you have an ache and be right. treated with some sort of medication. You really need to understand how the body works and how the body can regenerate and how smart our bodies really are if we treated them well. So I decided I had to write a book and what led to writing that book as well in 2017 was that clients were so willing to tell their stories of their success, their journeys with me of how they heal, you know? So that's changed well, a lot too, right? What's that? That's changed a lot too. I mean, there was a time when, you know, we really didn't share that much about what happened. We were kind of very insular and we kept those things to ourselves. But oh, I mean, I you were really able to get people to open up and then share their stories and in, in your book, which is fantastic. Right. So that book was published in 2017. It is on Amazon for anyone that's interested. And uh, again, it was just uh, to have a voice to right. shout out to the world how much they can do if they give their bodies a chance. So, but that wasn't enough for me because. <laughs> I wonder why. I mean, just listen to that journey so far. I mean, you've made a lot of wonderful changes and, and transitions from one thing into another. Yeah. Well, I recognize since that book and get, getting deeper and seeing more clients and realizing what, why were some people so ready and so willing to change and others, even though they were, they were not well, you know, they were sick. They were on, on a lot of medication. They were tired of going back to the doctor. They just couldn't do it. So my second book, which ironically, Trish today, is is we are launching the pre-sale. You can now pre-order that book. Isn't that uh, fantastic? How is it? I want to mention, but that book <laughs> is called "Do You Have the Guts to Be Healthy?" Because it's hard to change, you know, it it's hard to change. And frankly, the connection between the brain and the gut, you know, when you are inflamed, you have less um, guts. You have less drive. You have less you just don't have it in you, you know, so it goes together. Right. So that's the title of my second book. And my second book is um, dives deeper into how we think, uh, obviously, because that's that influences everything. Stress, you know, what is stress? Where did that word even come from? Why are some people, why are some people challenged with stress where others can handle things better? Uh, so whereas the first book is about the four pillars of health, which is our digestion, our absorption, our utilization, our elimination. 
the second book is more about how we digest, how we absorb, how we use, how we eliminate, how we move, and how we think. So how we move and how we think are the two new pillars. So tell me, Francis, if you, you know, you've mentioned that there's this change in dynamic, right? Some people are ready to change and others are a little apprehensive. So what do you think is the one common denominator, if there is one, amongst the people that you've been working with over the number of years that gives them the courage to make the decision to, to move into change? What, what do you think is the sort of common denominator? Well, it's the thing, well, you're not gonna, you may not like this one comment. People don't like to spend money, right? Yeah. And sometimes they just don't realize how much the support that they get will bring them to that next step. Right. So it's trusting, mm -hmm. trusting me or trusting whoever they choose, even a, a business coach or a life coach, right? If you yeah. want to bring your business to the next level, you know you can't do it yourself because you didn't. Right. You right. know, but you need yeah. help. So it's yeah. the same thing with your health, you know? And today people are so all over Google. You know, the minute they have an ache, they Google, oh, what is it, what is it, what is it? And you're not going to get the answers. You're not right. going to get the answers there at all. So you need to realize that, number one, you need support. So find the right person that, that um, resonates with you, that you feel comfortable with. You know, I offer and everybody should offer a complimentary call to see if there's a synergy, right? right. See if you jive with that person. And, and then... Then it works. So yeah, I'd say that there's the common, everyone that has had success with me has continue, has decided to commit to the support and continue their journey. Nothing changes in two weeks, right? No, that's for sure. That's so, very true. Yeah. Well, you, you know, one of the things that we talk about in the guest blog and we finish everyone's experience with three words of advice. And this is a wonderful segue to your three words of advice because yours are success begins in the mind. So tell us a little bit about, you know, I mean, you know, we've just said that, uh, you know, investing in yourself and being trusting in an individual and making that human connection are all really important. So how does how does your success begins in the mind translate to the viewing and listening audience who may be sitting there and thinking, you know, she's on to something there. I really need to think about this. OK, so I have a perfect example. So as I said, one of the new pillars is we are how we think. Right. Okay. So I recently have I had a client and she was diagnosed with diverticulitis. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay. So she belongs to a club on Facebook that is the divertic or let's say it's cancer, the cancer club. Mm -hmm. Well, that is just glorifying what you have. You walk into the room and right away, I have this. Mm -hmm. No, no. What is your, what, how, your, your brain doesn't know the difference from what you have, what you want to have. You, you know, it's, it's the choice of words. So if you keep convincing yourself that you have this, oh, I'm, then you will. I'm exactly, yeah. exactly. So, it's um, it's changing how you think and changing your words and changing the way you speak to yourself. Right. That is so important. Yeah. Well, Francis, I really want to thank you for these are really great tidbits of information as we sort of transition and turn the page into a new year, because traditionally, as we both know in the fitness industry, that the, the, the time when we sort of reevaluate where we are and where we want to go usually happens over the holiday season and moving into January. So I really want to thank you very much for spending some time with us. And to the viewing and listening audience, uh, we really did introduce you today to the person behind the logo. And Francis, you are our last guest for the first season of Business Mentorship, Keeping It Real. And we want to wish you all the best for the launch of the new book, which very, uh, you know, in, in inviting everyone to reach out to you and make that connection as they take a look at their own journey and turn the page into 2021. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Chris, uh, Trish, for having me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful holiday, everyone, and thank you for joining us.